Go on, as, as we're talking about skeletons. Okay. Favourite fictional skeleton. Skeletor. Oh man, the thing is, will American people know about that advert starring Skeletor where he just dances to 80s music? Because that's, that's a British advert, isn't it? So yeah, Americans watching, if you didn't know, um, here's a British advert where Skeletor's just getting his fucking groove on. Vultures are considered by many to be dirty, disease-ridden sky rats, a reputation that isn't all that fair for reasons we'll get to in a moment. But first though, let's talk about how a vulture can turn you into a skeleton in a matter of minutes. So Carl, vultures, skeletons. Yes, the legendary combination. Uh, you know, best buds forever. <laughs> Dante and Virgil of the animal world. <laughs> just vulture and skeleton. It's yes. got a mental image of like a greetings card of a vulture with its head wing around a skeleton. Yeah man, best buds forever. Anyway. Yes. You know, get started. Okay, well the reason well, they can turn you into a skeleton, obviously people are wondering like, how does a vulture turn into a skeleton? It's because they can eat practically fucking anything, because they possess one of the best digestive systems of any animal on the planet, and they can digest everything from disease-ridden rotten flesh to solid fucking bones. And they're not exactly picky about what they eat either, because if, I'm not sure how many nature documentaries you've watched, but... There are ones that show that vultures, fun fact, will occasionally just shove their heads up the asses of dead creatures, because obviously that's where all the good shit is, literally, and just like chow down on that. So like these facts combine to make vultures like, you know, terrifying in a group. So if you get a group or a wake of vultures, they can quite literally skeletonize like, you know, a, a recently like created corpse of an animal or a human, and you know, in a matter of minutes. What would you say your favourite food is? My favourite food? Yeah. Why would you ask me this after I just said vultures shove their head up the asses of dead because animals? Because I'm wondering, I'm wondering whether you would still eat your favourite food if the only way you could eat it <laughs> no. was to insert your head up the ass of an animal. You know what? I think I would just forego eating, like, you know, a chicken booner at that point. It's just, that's just not on. But, like, you know, to move away from the idea of shoving my head up a giant asshole to eat some chicken booner, um, like, the word for a, a, a group of vultures is a wake of vultures. Now I'm a big fan of, like, you know, these words used to describe a group of, uh, you know, animals. So what's your favourite one of those? Like, throw some out for me, because I love all of these. I've always, I always like Murder of Crows. Yeah, Murder of it's Crows. It's so sinister. Yeah, but it's like, it's so representative, isn't it? I've always been a fan as well of, like, a group of dolphins. Just a pod. Just a pod of dolphins. It's a nice little pod. Or frogs. Which is an army. An army of frogs. Which sounds more... Dangerous, doesn't it? I, I don't think frogs deserve, like, you know, a group title that badass. So I would give that maybe to, like, wolves or something like that. It's like a pack of wolves. No, an army of wolves. When we eventually get around to amphibians taking over the world, yes. we know who the army is. What? What, the frogs? Frogs, yeah. <laughs> tiny, little, teeny, tiny frogs. But they've got to be led by the ninja frogs, aren't they? That, that's their king. They worship it as a god. And just like you've got Toad sat on top of it, commanding the frog army. Oh man, no, no wait, we can't do this. No. We'll save that for another video, so let's talk more about these spooky skeletons. So vultures turning people into skeletons? Yes. Where is this information coming from? It's coming from anecdotal evidence from Indian farmers in the 1980s. And obviously, we should note that anecdotal evidence should always be taken with a pinch of salt, but this is interesting nonetheless. Um, according to them, during the 1980s in India, which is apparently the vulturiest time in history, um, the easiest way to dispose like, you know, of a dead cow was to simply skin it and then leave it out like, you know, for the elements and vultures to take care of, and the latter of which would apparently descend upon the corpse in, like, groups of hundreds and turn the cow into a skeleton in less than 20 minutes. But you said that's an anecdotal story. Yes, so unfortunately we can't prove that, but we do have evidence that can support it from forensic researchers in Texas who left out a human corpse and left it to the elements and some vultures to, like, like, to take note of how quickly the vultures would turn it into a skeleton. And according to them, a group of about 30 vultures turned a human corpse into a skeleton in less than five hours. And I, I, I know this is not very scientific, but I'm going to say if like 30 vultures can do it in five hours, 200 vultures can do it in 20 minutes, and 1,000 vultures can do it in about three seconds. What I'm imagining now, though, is just like, just a, just a horde of vultures just flying past someone and turning them into a skeleton instantaneously. Because uh, isn't that the scariest concept? Like, the idea of just being turned into a skeleton is so fucking terrifying. It's like, 
Like, what's your favourite skeleton like causing weapon, Brad? Because there's quite a few of them in fiction if you think about it. I think a personal favourite is Mars Attacks because every skeleton's a different colour. The skeleton ray. That thing's fucking terrifying. Like, you, know, you see, it's like the skeleton ray. And it's like, the thing is, you don't have to fire it once. You just hold it on like a super soaker. But it's a super soaker that turns you into a skeleton. <laughs> One that I've always liked is that bomb that the Green Goblin uses in Spider-Man that turns all of like the board of directors for Oscorp into skeletons and then he decides to never use that weapon again despite the fact you can't counter skeleton causing technology. Out am I? But I'm now picturing though, like imagine giving both of those weapons to like a single person, you now have the greatest threat to humanity to exist. And who do you think should wield those two weapons, Brad, and just like, you know, raise the skeleton army to take over the world? My money's on Prince fucking Lightstar from Skeleton Warriors. <laughs> just so you can put in the clip that Jim Sterling always uses, that's just, Skeleton Warriors, do 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 do. So that shit's the best. What is Skeleton Warriors? It's just this stupid fucking TV show about some stupid skeletons. <laughs> but man, there's so many cool skeletons in fiction, man. Like, what's your favourite fictional skeleton, Brad? Jack Skeleton's the classic. No, but mine's the wheel skeleton from Dark Souls. <laughs> the wheel <laughs> skeleton is the most terrifying ass skeleton to exist. Can't you forget in one skeleton? Who's that, Brad? The one that gets told to shut up and get, get slapped across the head. Put the fucking clip in and let's go. No, shut up, Louis. Ooh. Getting back to vultures, as I mentioned in the introduction to this piece, they're often unfairly categorised as being dirty creatures, which actually couldn't be further from the truth. Why are they not dirty creatures? Well, because vultures actually remove disease from the environment they live in, because, as I mentioned earlier, they have such a hardy immune system and such strong stomach acid, they can eat, like, flesh that's covered in disease-causing bacteria, effectively removing it from the environment in which it lives. They also piss and shit a powerful antiseptic, like at all times, basically. So whatever they're standing on is automatically disinfected. So yeah, they, they basically- I'm, I'm never gonna look at a, like a disinfectant dispenser again. <laughs> just a vulture's <laughs> asshole. He's lift up the vultures. <laughs> but yeah, like their piss and shit is um, like, it's antiseptic. So when, when you see them like stood on a dead body, they're, they're disinfecting the body as they shit and piss all over it. And also like, you know, vultures, they're not picky. They're not picky, so they don't mind eating like, you know, meat. That's just been sat there for a couple of days. They're, they're just gone and pissed all over. We've all been there, haven't we? Yeah, well, you know what? I'm not going to judge the vultures for doing this. I have eaten some truly horrendous takeaways, and I've woken up the next day and still taken a bite out of it and gone, I, I hate myself. Hang on, if vultures can eat pretty much anything and not get any like disease from it, yes. why piss on it in the first place? To stop other animals from eating it, because obviously vultures don't care what they eat. Like, vultures don't give a shit, so like, say if there's a hyena about, the vulture will just piss and shit all over, like, you know, a carcass to stop the animal from eating it because it knows that he doesn't mind. But surely the other animals have got less chance of getting diseased if they eat the disinfected meat. They do, but they're not going to eat, like, you know, vulture shit either. <laughs> that's the equivalent of, like, it's antiseptic, remember, so it's, like, very acidic tasting, and animals don't want to go anywhere near that, so obviously they naturally shy away from stuff that tastes like that. And it just makes me think now, like going back to the example of like eating a really crap takeaway, just a guy, a drunk guy pissing on his kebab to stop people nicking it. It's like when you get like a pizza and you sit down and you make some, oh, give us a slice, mate. You're like, no, fuck off, get your own. It's like whipping out your knob and just like, you know what? It's like going to town on that pizza. It's like, yeah, you want some? You want some of this pizza? There we go. But you shouldn't let any of this distract you from the fact that a particularly motivated group of vultures could, if they so wanted to, turn your entire body into a skeleton and then shit bleach all over your corpse. Hooray! So Brad, we've talked about skeletons a lot in this video, so I'm going to pose you a question now of what skeleton from fiction would win the Skeleton Wars? Well, I mean, let, let's set us off with, as I mentioned before, popular skeleton, Jack Skellington. Jack Skellington, yeah. Because obviously he's got his Halloween army. Yeah, what powers does he have? Because I know he's in that character action game that's actually pretty good. And he can do, like, you know, he can do Jack Skellington combos on people's assholes. If, if we use that as a reference, yes. uh, he's got the soul robber. So he's got that big, like, gooey whip thing. That steals people's souls. But just, do skeletons have souls, though? Aren't skeletons, by definition, already dead? But then again, isn't he the guy who drives the pirate ship in James with a Giant Peach? So he's got that as well. Oh god, he is that yeah. guy, isn't he? I forgot so that. So he's got access to a giant yeah. pirate ship as well. So he's got a, 
He can also take Santa form. Yeah. And in Santa form, and he's got the, the, the um, Pumpkin King form as well, so he can throw fire and presents. Damn it, man. I think you've already picked the winner with Jack Skellington, because that's a pretty solid power set. But I'm going to throw one out there that I think might have a chance. Sir Daniel Fortescue from the Medieval Games. Okay. Because he has all like the heroic weaponry, doesn't he? He has the arsenal. Like He might not have an army behind him, but he does have a lot of cool shit that he can use to defend himself. Because he has like you know the unblockable shield, he has the throwing knives, like, he has the ability to throw his own head and his arm like a boomerang. So he's got, I think Daniel, Sir Daniel Fortescue could make it. Not to mention, he's got an eyeball. So he's still got one human part left. He's got that. Like, Jack Skeleton ain't got no eyeballs. How's he going to see someone sneaking up on him? Since you mentioned him at the start, Skeletor. I think Skeletor would do pretty well. So he has, like, you know, he has all that army at his disposal. Not to mention he can do, like, super sick magic. And he's got the coolest ability of any skeleton, I think. And that's the one where he can walk through a mirror and then start you from falling by punching the mirror from the other side. Have you ever seen that? No. It's like it's the thing where it's like Skeletor does it in one of the cartoons where he walks into a mirror to leave the room, puts his arm through the mirror and then smashes it himself so they can't follow him. <laughs> it's like greatest exit ever. So basically Skeletor is mirror master from like DC. Just think about that power for a moment where if he took you into a house of mirrors, he can punch you from every direction at once simultaneously. And that shit's terrifying. I think Skeletor will stand a good chance, but another one I think might better do some damage will be the skeletons from the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Oh, the cursed, uh, yeah, the, the cur cursed ones. Yeah, yeah, the cursed pirates, because they cannot die. Like, they're, they're, the curse is you can't die. You must walk around in the moonlight as a skeleton forever. Yeah. And I think they'd do all right. Like, they do that cool shit where they walk underwater, don't they? So I don't know if a skeleton can drown, but I'm pretty sure like, if they just drag them underwater, there's not much they can do. Mm. See, these are all well and good, but I think I think there's a there's a proper ringer. Yeah, there's a clear winner to the skeleton wars. Okay then, lay it on me. The Ghost Rider, but not just any Ghost Rider. Nick Cage Ghost Rider. Oh, that's a winner right there. Because like, the Ghost Rider, I think like in the comics, his power set is just like, oh, you can't be killed. We're talking about piss disinfectant. He yeah. pisses fire. <laughs> he does. There's no, there's no greater disinfectant than just fire. Because that's the thing. Like, he has like the uh, the chain, doesn't he? And he can ride up the wall on the flaming motorcycle. And then everything he like rides turns into like this fire hell demon thing. But he's he's on the earth to return evil to wherever it came from. And most skeletons are evil. Yeah. And all of his weapons are hellfire. And they burn the souls. And so if like it's souls reincarnating in skeletons, he could kill them. The thing is, like, Sir Daniel Fortescue, though, he's good. He's a hero. Yeah. So I think he's done a chance. So like, well, he'd probably team up with the Ghost Rider. <laughs> because like, obviously the penance stare wouldn't work on um, Sir Daniel Fortescue. But would it work on Jack Skellington? I was going to say, Jack he's, Skellington Jack is Skellington. not really evil, is he? But he does do evil things. Like, he what? does kidnap Santa, and that is a crime. That is pretty bad. Crime. He does commit at least one crime. And if he's committed a crime, well, I think Santa was pretty pissed off about that, so he would be made to feel the pain. You, me you measure by your guilt, aren't you? Yes. Does Jack Skellington show any guilt? Yeah. Thing is, though, can he look into his eyes if he doesn't have eyes? Interesting. Yeah. Cause Jack but then Sir Daniel Fortescue, he, he does have eyes, but he's all right. So you were saying before about how it's a weakness for Jack to have no eyes. Now it's his greatest strength. Would you imagine? I'm just now imagining though, Sir Daniel Fortescue just with the hell shotgun and then riding on Ghost Rider say, you know what? Put that in the HD remake of Medieval. Just give Sir Daniel Fortescue Ghost Rider's motorbike and his big giant flame whip. Oh, there's an idea for your PlayStation. Make it happen.